The topic of this next chapter is mostly simple machines. But before we can really talk about what a simple machine is and what it does, we actually have to talk about work because simple machines help us with the work that we do. Now, the question is, what is work? When you're little, uh, you tend to think of work as being, um, you know, mommy or daddy leaves for the day and they go to work. So when you go to work, you're a policeman or you're a fireman or you're uh, a teacher or any number of a number of different professions that you may think of. Um, and we also tend to think of work as being bad. You know, maybe it's something that, oh, I don't, I don't get to relax today. I don't get to go to the beach. I have to go to work. But when we think about work in terms of physics, uh, it has a completely different definition to it. So when we think of work in terms of physics, it has two main requirements. The first requirement is that in order for work to be done, force has to be applied. Now we've talked about force. We know that force is a push or a pull. We know that it can be a contact force or we know that it can be a field force. Uh, it can be something like gravity or electricity or magnetism. But in some way or another, force has to be applied in order for work to be done. The second thing that has to be true is that the, an object has to be moved in the same direction that the force is applied. So if you don't have a moving object, you haven't done any work. And again, that seems a little odd compared to a lot of the definitions that we normally think of of work. So as an example, um, I could stand here and I can push on this wall all day long. I can push until I am sweaty and worn out and my muscles are cramping and I'm tired. Um, but if I don't move the wall, according to physics, I haven't done any work. Now, on the other hand, if I take this real simple magnet and I put it on the board and I take one finger and I just shove it this way, because the object has been moved, I've done work on it. And because it's moved in the same direction that I've applied the force, that's the second component, meaning that I've, that I've done work on the magnet. All I had to do was push it and it had to move in that direction. Now, if I push it this direction and try to jam it into the board, it's not gonna go anywhere. So again, I can push as hard as I want all day long and the magnet's not going to go anywhere, so I won't have done any work on it. So work has to have a force applied and the object has to move in the same direction that the force was applied. The force has to be parallel to the motion. Um, and the reason I say that, they gave you a, um, several examples. In fact, it was on page um, 297 in your book where they gave you these, these pictures of this uh, man doing different types of work. And they pointed out that um, the man pushing on the car here at the bottom is doing work on it because all of the force that he is applying is going the same direction that the car is moving. Now, if he pushes on the car and he can't get it to move, then he hasn't done any work on it. The car has to move in order for him to do any work on it. Um, by a similar token here, the man is standing on the skateboard and the only force he's applying to it is a downward force because he's standing on it, uh, but the, the skateboard is moving off to the side. So he's applying force, but it's not in the same direction as the motion. So he's not doing any work on it. Now, for the skateboard to be moving in the first place, he had to do work on it at a previous time. At some point, he had to put a push um, on the skateboard that was gonna go this direction so that the skateboard would go this direction. So he has previously done work on it because it's moving, but he's not currently doing work on it because he's just standing on it, okay? Now, if you look at um, this guy up here who's pulling a suitcase, you'll notice that he's not pulling it directly horizontally. He's, it's got a nice slanty handle on it and the force that he's, he's applying isn't straight, it's kind of going upward. And so even though he's not lifting the suitcase up off the floor, part of that force is going at a slant. So part of it's going up and part of it's going horizontally. And so only the portion of the force that is horizontal is the part of the force that's going into doing work. Uh, if you take physics later on in high school, we'll actually do a lot of analyzing of components of force and we'll talk about how only this component of the force and not this component of the force counts. We'll do some mathematical calculations, which at this point uh, you're not ready for yet because you haven't had that much um, of the advanced math that you need in order to, be ha to handle that kind of math. 
But what you do need to know for right now is that only the force that is parallel to the motion or in the same direction as the motion is what counts in order to be able to move the object, okay? Um, you actually probably are already aware of this. If you have a box, and it's, let's say that it's a box full of books that you're trying to move, and maybe the box is say about this long and about this uh, big and about maybe this, this wide, if you can see those dimensions like that. Um, if you just wanna scoot the box along the floor, you aren't going to tend to try to shove it while you're standing up or while you're bent over. You're gonna crouch down and you're going to push on the box as much horizontally as you can possibly push on it because instinctively you know that you need your force to be parallel to the direction that you want it to go. You're not gonna stand from you know three feet above it and try to pull on it because uh, for one thing, you might hurt your back, and for the other thing, it's, it's not nearly as effective as if you'd get down to where the box is and push it straight horizontally if that's the direction you're trying to get it to go, okay? So again, a lot of these physics principles, you already know them up here. It's just that maybe you haven't actually put them into words to make it make a whole lot more sense to you um, in the way that we're doing it this year in physical science. Now, in order to calculate work, we've, we've learned about how to calculate force, and we know that the unit of force is a Newton. So when you push or pull on something, you're, you do that with a certain number of Newtons. And then the force, as we already said, has to be moved some distance. And so the distance that we want is always going to be in meters. And so when I multiply Newtons times meters, I get a unit called a Joule, uh, which was named after James Prescott Joule, who did a lot of the um, a lot of the work on work, a lot of the study and a lot of the research um, on this topic. And so they named the unit of work after him. And so a jewel, um, we abbreviate with a capital J. So this, again, is a, is a very simple um, formula that you're going to be using. If they give you force and they give you distance, all you have to do is multiply it together. So as an example, let's say that I have a box on the floor. Let's say that I apply 15 newtons of force to it and the box moves a total distance of 10 meters. So if I apply 15 newtons of force and I move the box 10 meters, then 150 times 10 is 150. And since it's newtons times meters, the answer is going to be in joules. Okay. So um, you're going to be doing a homework assignment today where you're going to be calculating some work done and deciding if work even has been done or not in a particular situation. And when you come back the next time, we'll start talking about simple machines.